Hi everyone, welcome to the final round from the 2013 Sheffield Congress Major where I was on the grand total of a whopping half out of four which put me on bottom board and I was very close to getting the symphony by I was playing um, a higher rate to that actually which shows how the section was um, although we didn't actually have the ECF so it must have been uh, maybe a YCA it was Steve Housley 155 um, interestingly enough, you won't think he'd be on half out of four as well. So looking at his, some of his league results, his wins over 160 is galore. So very surprising. Um, played E4, kept faith for the low pairs, got another E5 against E4, typical. Most boring line. And then that far, I'm going to get a um, main line low pairs. Nope, I got the open one when I take C4, which is quite sharp. And I couldn't even remember what the move 6 was. But I actually did play theory moves because I went D4. I thought that was correct, he put D B5, D5, so he's given the pawn back for a good, solid position. D takes C5, Bishop E6, C3, because I think Black has a positional threat of playing Knight A5 in this position. Back in the Bishop pair, so I avoided that, so I always retreat the Bishop. So he tacks him up Bishop C2, pointing at the Black King, he castled, Rook E1. B4, trying to undermine my um, C3 point, and I played knight D4, very good move actually. You know, I didn't have a clue what I was doing, and I was completely demoralised by this poor performance. Knight takes D4, C takes D4, knight B7. Also, all of a sudden I've actually got a really nice position, because I've got a nice space advantage. The only problem is that my centre can be undermined, upper French style. I wasn't sure how to continue here, I think I played a bit of a rash move. So looking at playing queen h5 and creating like weakness, say forcing into like g6 or h6 and just queen back to e2. But after c5, I didn't think I was going to exploit it because I can't play h4, h5. Maybe knight f3. I played f4 instead, which is a bit reckless, weakening me on the diagonal. But I'm I've got a threat of f5 and then a strong attack to come. f5, queen g4, f6, and all that. So he plays queen c8. Which adds more support to c5 and also maybe plans to play bishop f5. I played knight f3. And I expected before c5, I thought he might try and block me up with f5. But it's actually not very good. It's something like this happens actually. I played c5. I played king h1. Can't have any pins on the diagonal perhaps. And then if he, um, I, spe I expected c takes d4. Then after knight takes d4, I'm threatening to blast him with f5 again. So maybe bishop g4. Queen d2. Plus me to put my bishop. But I feel what is better here. It's like an, we've got a nice grip on d4. I've got potential good attacking chances against the king. This is a nice position. So we played c4, a very double edged move actually. This creates a queen side pawn majority and the ability to create, create a pass pawn with c3. Which will sort be of good, but in games will be good for black. The disadvantage is that it takes the pressure off my strong centre. So now I can like concentrate more on throwing pawns at white's king. But the thing is now, this means now I'm structurally worse, so I must attack and throw resources at the black king. And I find it hard to break through. I play rook f1, which is probably a, too slow. My plan is to try and move the knight and play f5. So my opponent, rather than rushing with c3, which he put, I think he played the correct decision. Oh, actually, he played f5. Which I thought was a good decision at the time, stopped me um, from trying to block up the king's side and e takes f6 and it was harmless. If bishop takes f6, I do get the e5 square. But after knight d6, this is this has got to go for blackness. So I kept it closed and played knight g5, preparing queen h5 ideas. And he kicked, I expected him, I expected him to give his bishop up actually. But I thought this would be fine because I'm. Queen h5 and g6 ideas and a second h6 potentially. Say blade c3, can maybe play queen h5. Actually, it doesn't quite work in this position. Let's get the best move actually, knight d8. Maybe I can play queen h5, force him g6 or summit. Put the queen, drop the queen back, and then try and get g4 in, perhaps. There's lots of potential attacking plans. Rook f3, rook h3 swings to mine. 
but I thought that was best. We played h6, and first I was looking at queen h5, trying to sack this um, piece, which I think is quite dangerous. Because if, if he takes it, I take it back, and he has to give his bishop up now, he has to give the piece back, otherwise I'm going to kill him with g6 and queen h7, mate, so he has to give it back, i would seen. But I didn't see the point, he just cause I thought this is fine, I thought he just plays queen e8. But after queen h3, hitting f5 three times, White's well, got a very good position. So I actually have to queen h5. Just moving the bishops better. But now again, I haven't got a follow up, and in fact, I can't take the bishop off like I did in the game, so I have to go back to h3. Otherwise, bishop e8 will stop on my attack. So that's why I didn't play it. So I took the bishop, queen takes e6, and now the key move if you want to try and spot it. So I spot the pause of the video is a key move in this position. g4. Because if f takes g4, f5, queen goes somewhere. Taking g4. And this is going to be over pretty quickly this position. While all of white's pieces are pointed at the black king, which is too exposed. He's got, in fact, the only move is h5 to stay in the game. Maybe he's go back to g2. So king moves, we've got e6. Queen f6, take this pawn. This is to hit in the knight, it's just nasty. So we played g6. Now, the reason this is good for white is because there's pressure on f5, and also my rook gets to the g file, won't move quicker than blacks. So I take it, it takes back, but then I play queen h5. I started spending a lot of time on these moves, trying to work out accurate move orders. The alternative, of course, is rook g1, but they're both similarly strong. King h7, then queen h5. Just a sort of transposition. When queen h5, threatening rook g1 and rook g6, it's taking h7 to get out of the check and prepared rook g8 to contest the g file. One of black's problem is that um, we both have problems, but black's main one is that it's b7, now it's completely out of the game. It takes, couple, it takes two moves to get back to d8 to f7, and I have no time to build up threats in the meantime. I've also got a problem that my c1 bishop is completely blocked out by my f4 pawn. Um, so I didn't play the most accurate move now. The most accurate is to play rook f3. And if rook g8... Oh, so just to know from this position, um, black's rook can never move to g8. Because um, an idea of queen h5 was to put pressure on f5, which is one the queen. So I can never, you can never play rook g8. So say he tries to bring his knight back into the game. We play rook h3. But I don't see what the threat is. So it's c3, bishop e3, c takes b2, rook g1. This is interesting, rook f7, queen g4, ah, very nice, for any mate on g8. After knight c6 to start the mate on g8, rook h5 and f5 just drops and black's king gets hacked. Bishop e3 I played, which is also good, just again the rook's connected, preparing to double on the g file, maybe re rewrap the bishop round. He played a5, which is a nice defensive idea, preparing to bring the rook to a6, time more cover to h6, and also get ready for a4, b3 ideas. However, it is a blunder. Uh, the best try was, I expected queen f7. I dropped the queen back to h3 to keep an eye on a5, then maybe try to count the play going with c, well maybe, I think she tried to bring the knight back into the game. Because now we can go to e6. But I still got rook g1. Now e6. Rook g3. And we're going to double on the g file. And rook g8 is still impossible. So maybe if knight g7 to stop that. Rook a g1 is killing all the spot. So if knight moves back. Rook g6. Or bishop d1 even. So we played a5. I played rook g1. Rook a6, so that's a nice defensive idea. I was getting frustrated now that I was never going to find a way, I couldn't find a way to break through. I played rook g3, which is again not the most precise, but still strong. The most precise move is to take advantage of the pin. If queen g4, Freddy mate on g7. If queen g6, we play queen back to h3. It's too precise this for me. Queen moves again, we'll go rook g2. And rook g1 is going to be very strong. Another alternative was to play 
Rook G2 instead of Rook G3. I'm not sure this is stronger because I thought with Rook G3 he's more flexible. So Queen F7 again. Queen goes back to H3. Rook G6. Rook A G1. Take it. Take, take the Queen of course. And Bishop takes f5 is next because cat, black cat defend his king and the pawn. And then once that pawn goes, white will come crashing through. I played rook g3, queen f7, challenging my queen. So I've got back to h3, which is strong because it keeps an f5. Now I played rook g6, trying to challenge me on the g file. And I actually played rook takes g6, which is, turns out to be the strongest. You played queen takes g6. Then over it comes to g1, pretty logical stuff, queen goes back to 7 And now we need to get a new piece into the attack So we need to look at Now of course uh, the strongest was just to move the um, queen to g4 or, g or g2 I missed this idea actually of playing queen g2 and then He can't stop bishop takes f5 because he can't defend all these squares around his king So if we just give a token move, so then like try to get back into the game We take bishop takes f5 check if queen takes f5, queen g7 is mate. And black has to defend both g6 and g7 and g8. All they have to be defended and they can't be. So I play bishop d1 anyway, preferring to swing the bishop to h5. And I thought he could defend in this position with rook g8. I thought I defended, but it turns out I play. Because now I thought now the pressure off f5 is gone, so you can, I, can play, but I can play rook takes g8. If queen takes g8, f5 drops again, so he has to play king takes g8. And we now have bishop h5. If queen has to stay on f5, so if queen f8, sneaky check that I'd not seen in my variations, my opponent must have missed as well, winning d5. And, it's, and the reason it's only winning the pawn, it, the reason it's pawn is because now it gives white a very dangerous pass pawn on e5, protected pass pawn, that's why winning f5 or d5 is so devastating. If black tries to sneakily get a counter play, then we just take it off. And if it takes back, we have time to get rid of the knight. And we can actually, we will recover and see once we just play d5 when. He played knight d8, and of course bishop h5 was played, winning the queen, because after queen e6, I played bishop g6 check. And of course, white asked black either, I mean, asked him to discover it, which will win all our mate, so he has to give his queen up. And I've also got this check at the end of it as well, winning the pawn, so now I've got this decisive material advantage. And he played on for a bit, but the result was never really in doubt. And I started playing with confidence. I even took this pawn as well. And my bishop's controlling the queen square, the pawns, I took that one as well. So, uh, I missed. This, this just wins instant. This just wins um, even quicker. So he's fox, I reckon, knight. I've got a bit relaxed. And I resigned, giving me my first win at the tournament in the last game, and I'm bottom board. But what confuses me is that this is actually a really nice game, this, with no clear mistakes. Just a couple of little inaccuracies, and I was already in the winning position. So if I could play like this every single game, I'd be a lot stronger player, but inconsistency, not good. So of course, overall, I lost 18 points. Just kept it down to just 18 points, my losses. It was a fun event anyway, plenty of my um, friends were playing, it's good laughs, so it's, it's not a tournament I regret entering at all. Um, this is, brings me up to date, this in my congresses, because my next one is next weekend at Leeds, and I've got the um, the British, I'm playing two rapid plays, and the major open, so I have 23 games for you after that. So when I get, so I'll do my um, Leeds games in the week, leading up to British, and then I'll have Wi-Fi at the hotel, so maybe I can do some videos of my games while I'm there. If I'm in a McKeeb mood. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this um game and video and series, and please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.